thanks so much for sharing your garden with us. And now we're going to be turning to a purveyor of really exciting plants. I'm joined by Janet Rademacher. Rademacher. Thank you. For, <laughs> from Mountain States Wholesale Nursery in Arizona. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you, your nursery is the originator of so many of the cool plants that I really get excited about in our local nurseries. You're a wholesaler, but you really pioneer the use of a lot of our uh, really drought tolerant tough plants from the desert southwest so i'm real excited to visit with you oh thanks it's fun to be here yeah, yeah the owner of our nursery ron gas um is just a plant guy mm -hmm. and he used to travel in texas and collect seed and cuttings a lot so mm -hmm. we ended up with a lot of texas natives well so. your plants uh are kind of riding the crest right now throughout this region and i'm i'm sure throughout the southwest because of their durability yeah, we've, there's been a lot more interest in the last two or three years because of the drought in Texas. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Well, these are all drought tolerant plants that we're going to be talking about. I want to give people just a, a quick tour of some of these entries, and some of them are completely new to me and very exciting. We have a, next to us a little apuntia, which for those in Texas, uh, what we call prickly pears. Right. But this looks like a prickly cone to me. <laughs> yeah, it's called the pine cone prickly pear. Okay. if these break off, we could break one off just for fun, but uh -huh. they look like pine cones. Right. Well, it's really a charming little plant and um, obviously a desert species. Right. It's very, yeah. very tough and drought tolerant. It's uh, hardy to about 15 degrees. Okay. So could Pre maybe take a little protection in the coldest night of an Austin winter once right. every 10 years or so. Yeah. But uh, very attractive. I would love to have this in a container. Yeah, it's a perfect container plant and it doesn't get too large. It gets maybe two feet tall by two feet wide at maturity. Mm -hmm. And then if these happen to break off, you can just stick them in the soil and they'll root. You can kind of propagate right, your own. Right. Well, the Opuntias are famous for that. And this is, uh, I think, the cutest Opuntia I have ever seen. <laughs> it's pretty cute. <laughs> and uh, it does, uh, I see one or two little um, spines in there, but not too many. No, it's pretty <laughs> user friendly compared to a lot of them. So, oh, yeah, right, yeah. right. So, Again, uh, prickly, well, well uh, I'll let you tell me the common name of this one again. Pinecone prickly pear. Okay, pinecone prickly pear, added to the list. And there are local nurseries that uh, people can find these at. And uh, all they have to do is look at it on your website and they'll find retail centers here in, in Texas. Right, there's a place on the website where it says retail sources and mm -hmm. you can pull it up and it'll list all the cool. garden centers in Texas. Okay. So. Well, the, I love the Hesperallos, among mm -hmm. my all-time favorite plants, and you have two exciting new varieties. Uh, the one in the foreground over there is called Brake Lights, and yes. this is one that I've seen in the nurseries now for the past year or two, mm -hmm. and uh, a very different flower color. Yeah, it is. Um, you'll see it in a lot of the retail garden centers now. We've also licensed some Monrovia to grow it, mm -hmm. so you'll see more oh, that yes. way. Mm -hmm. um, but it is a little compact, Hesperalo. It is, yeah, it is, it, it is more compact, isn't it? It only gets two feet tall mm -hmm. at the most, more like 18 inches. Mm -hmm. So it's slower growing, but it's petite and you can mass them and put them in pots, right. that sort of thing. But the flower color is just really intense red. The yeah. owner of our nursery has been breeding Hesperalos to mm -hmm. try to get different colors. Well, it is an intense red, very attractive. And uh, the, the more compact size is actually very beneficial. There are a lot of places where you uh, Hesperalos would be perfect to use, but because they're so loopy, right. they, they grow out into walkways and mm -hmm. paths and the flowers Arch. stems get, get so long, they can actually be a little problematic in tight mm -hmm. spaces. So this is nice. The right behind it is a, a hybrid Hesperalo. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a form of Hesperalo that I've always called giant Hesperalo. And mm -hmm. what you've done is cross those with the old red yuccas, right? Right. So unfortunately, <clears throat> this doesn't have flowers on it, but um, this is a hybrid between the red yucca and the giant Hesperalo. Mm -hmm. And the flowers are pink, mm -hmm. a really pretty shade of pink, and mm -hmm. they're perfectly straight. So we named it Pink Parade okay. because if you plant a row of them, the flower spikes just kind of march along and they don't flop over. You were talking about right, that. That's, right. So it's easy. It's more contained. Well, that, that is a good thing to know. And mm -hmm. if, uh, I could see these in a mass planting and I could imagine a, a, 
a mass of those pink flowers would be really stunning. Yeah, it is. We we have them growing in the field at one of our nurseries in a long row, mm -hmm. and they're just so architectural. Right. It's a great one, and it's equally as tough and cold hardy as the red yeah. yucca. The, the, these are about as fireproof a plant Absolutely. as you can get. <laughs> yes, you can garden with anywhere yeah. in the yeah. in the Southwest, and they do well in with a little bit of uh, moisture or just complete dry, dry tolerant. Yeah. yeah, you know, for us in Phoenix, they need some irrigation, but mm -hmm. depending, you know, here in Austin, you get a lot more rain than we do usually. Usually. So right. they may not need it. Lock on wood there. Okay, right next to it, we have a, a beautiful aloe, really striking in full bloom. Yeah, this is aloe blue elf. We got this from a grower in Southern California originally, and we are in love with it because it takes reflected heat and full sun. You know, most of the aloes really need a little protection from the sun for us anyway. But this one is really heat tolerant and it's hardy to about 15 also. So okay. it's a little more cold hardy than some of the aloes. Yeah, a lot of the ones that uh, you, we see in the market here tend to be cold hardy to say maybe 22, 23 mm -hmm. degrees. So getting it the extra eight degrees, uh, again, will make it sail through probably about 90% of our winters here. So that's, yeah. that's a little protection may be sometimes required. And it's a winter bloomer, which is really neat. And both of these plants, the Hesperallo brake lights and the mm -hmm. aloe blue elf are hummingbird attracted. So oh, well, yeah. yeah, they right. love those tubular flowers. Right. So. Well, um, again, on the tough plant list, uh, Candelia has got to be up there among the, the, uh, the best of the desert plants for just, you know, durability. And I, I have to say, I really love the form. It reminds me of Equisetum, yeah. the scouring rush, mm -hmm. you know. This and but uh, 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 Equisetum requires a lot of water, and it's very invasive, and this doesn't. Right. It's and this is probably, if I had to pick one, one of the absolute toughest plants we grow. Mm -hmm. It takes the cold, it takes the heat, it'll survive in really horrible soil, mm -hmm. um, very little soil. It's native to the Big Bend area of sure. Texas. Right. So anyway, it's it's pretty indestructible. It does really well in pots, in full sun, reflected heat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it takes so, just about everything. Right, well uh, again, that fine texture of it is, mm -hmm. is, is really unique. And mm -hmm. I, I could see these planted in really narrow strips. Right. As a, you know, how tall do they get? Not much taller than you see there. Mm -hmm. um, although I, in shady spots, I've seen them kind of stretch and, and uh, yeah, get a little, like right. grow up a tree or something. But that's about <laughs> <laughs> that's about as tall as they usually get. Okay, right and, there. Uh, very closely related to that, uh, it, it appears, uh, and right in front of it is another uh, plant um, that uh, is called lady slipper plant. And I, I don't know how it got that name, but uh, it, it, it is. it's very attractive as well. Yeah, that plant is native to Baja. And um, the flowers, it's not blooming now, unfortunately, but they look like little uh, orange lady slippers. Okay. That's where it gets, uh, they're okay. little tubular flowers. Okay. Um, but actually this plant doesn't flower that much. It's really grown for the form and mm -hmm. the structure. And um, this one's a little frost hardy, or I'm sorry, frost tender for um, the Austin area, but I've seen it used here more and more in containers where people mm -hmm. can protect it. Okay. You know, one time I was asked what my favorite plant in the world is, and that's it. Mm -hmm. Still, you know, right. 10 years later, it's awesome. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, it and how tall does it get? Um, probably about three and a half feet. Okay. Mm -hmm. Again, a very well-behaved little plant. Yeah. Then. So not too uh, obnoxious in terms of spreading out and flopping mm -hmm. over and that sort of thing. And uh, I really love the, the shade of green. Yeah, it's that nice chartreuse color. And one thing about that plant, it'll handle almost full shade Ah. and full sun and the more shade you put it into the twistier the stems get it kind of ah, looks like medusa hair okay. it's pretty neat okay very cool <laughs> very cool uh, we have the gopher plant as well this is a euphorbia mm -hmm. and uh, this is i love the foliage on this it's really nice yeah that's a mediterranean native but it's done really well in most parts of the southern united states it's a pretty tough plant it gets about three by three feet it blooms at the tips of all those branches with these really unusual chartreuse flowers. Right. And then it kind of acts like a pinstem, and after it gets done flowering, the stems kind of die back a little bit. We get a lot of calls from customers saying, mm -hmm. what did we do wrong? The stems right. are dying back. <laughs> That's normal. Mm -hmm. And then you trim them back, and most of the rest of the year, it's just kind of a tight rosette. Okay. And then well, real briefly, uh, you've also brought a couple of Tacoma stands, and this is something else you've been experimenting with, lots mm -hmm. of new color forms there. Yeah, there are a lot of new Tacoma mm -hmm. colors out on the market. These two, one has red flowers, mm -hmm. it's called Crimson Flare, and then the other has like really bright tangerine 
flowers called solar flare. Right. Well, yeah. everybody knows yellow bells. Right. That's uh, one of our These are just new colors. New That's colors all. and uh, really adding a, a kind of a hot touch to the garden yeah. during the summertime here mm -hmm. in Austin. So again, folks can find you online. What's the website? MSWN. Dot com, yep. short for Mountain States Wholesale Nursery. Okay, very good. And uh, again, at that site, people can find out about the retail outlets where your plants are available throughout mm -hmm. Texas. And we really appreciate f you being here, but also appreciate the pioneering job that your or, company is doing on providing these wonderful plants to all of us. Oh, it's a fun place to work. Okay. Thanks. Well, thank you for being here. And coming up next is our friend Daphne.